Hello, healthy angels. Welcome to this episode of Humanitarian Chronicles, where I document extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. We are here today with the awesome and extraordinary Ramania Dean Thomas, founder of Shaman Shack Herbs. He is a world-renowned Taoist tonic herbalist in the Gate of Lion lineage. It is a 5,000-year-old herbal system from China using tonic herbs to maintain balance. He studied Chinese med medical diagnosis, is a master herbalist. He was Ron T. Garden's apprentice and master herbalist for eight years, was head the superior herbalist at Erwan's Tonic Bar, and then founded Shaman Shack Herbs, one of the highest quality herb and tonic establishments in the world. Romania is also a deeply inspired author of seven books, including Ra Chi, Healing Thresholds, and the He Sien and the Essene, four, we'll, we'll name four. He's so incredible, I'm so happy to have him here. I have known him and he has helped me throughout so many trying periods of my life with his beautiful heart and his amazing herbs. Welcome to the show, Romania. I'm stoked to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I well, have if my I could tea. have as pretty a face as you, the, the viewers would really be interested in this. <laughs> oh, oh you, well, you do. You do, darling. You are a handsome young buck. And look, Romania has age reversed. I mean, he's 105. Look how good he looks. No, I'm kidding. For Just whatever, about. Yeah, you're very, pretty close. For whatever age you are, you look amazing. But no, I'm, I'm here with my herbal tea in honor of you and your inspiration. Oh, great. Yeah, how, how did you get into all of this? How did you come to be so passionate about herbs as you are? Well, that's a question I've been asked a lot lately. You know, of course, I love to answer, but I'm a man of stories, and my, my answers can tend to ramble uh, pretty and get into some pretty crazy, uh, uh, you know, cul-de-sacs and things like that, you know, as we live our lives, right? Definitely. But, um, you know, when I was a kid growing up in Kentucky, everything about China just had this massive impact on me. I didn't know why. But, uh, and then when I was 21 years old, I was traveling in a band, playing around and touring in this year, and I met this Chinese woman, and she was this uh, mystical, sort of strange woman, and she came up to me and she said, may I ask you two questions? And I said, yes. She said, what is your birth date, place, and time? I gave her that. And she said, and what is your phone number? I gave her that. She said, thank you. My name is Sharon. I'll talk to you later. She left. And so uh, two days later, I get a phone call. And it's her, and she says, uh, I'm that lady that asked you for your birthday. And I says, oh, yeah. She goes, can I, uh, can I get your uh, address? I, so I sent her. I was living in a hotel in Los Angeles at the time. I was in a rock and roll band. I was 21 years old. And um, or like actually a rockabilly band, you know. And uh, I was playing drums, just traveling, you know. I didn't, I mean, whatever. Awesome. And, uh, and so uh, I get a box of paintbrushes in the mail a couple days later from this girl. And I had really thought myself to be an artist. Like I didn't, I thought music was just kind of a joke that I was riding along with for fun. But really, I thought my karma in this life, because I'd been a scholar to an art school and all that, and I thought, oh, that's my that's my thing is art at that time. Uh, and and then I, I called her. I said, how come uh, you said you knew to send me a box of paintbrushes? And she said, well, I know a lot about you, and I've got to talk to you, and, and uh, there's a lot that you need to know right now. So she came down to L.A. Uh, I think she was from San Francisco. She came down there. And uh, she came in and said, look, there's a lot, of, you know, first thing, don't take this music seriously. You're going to do something else very, very important with your life. And I'm here to tell you that. I said, oh, great. So she went on to inform me that um, she and her friend, uh, I actually watched, I watched her and her friend on a Ouija board. And it said that I'd been a Chinese doctor in 1580. Wow. Um, wrote that out on a piece of paper while well, it was going really fast. So uh, I didn't. Necessarily, I got this. I got this shaky feeling when it said that, you know. But I, I can't judge whether or not, you know, anybody should use a Ouija board or not. But they were doing that, and it's like told me I'd been a Chinese doctor. And man, I got the, I got really willing and inside when that happened. It's the year fifteen eighty. So then uh, she and I went to China together, and we went up to the northern oh China. Gosh where uh, all the herbs are come from, where all the herbs are harvested. And we stayed in a town called Jilin. We were in the hotel, and that night I had insomnia, and I went out, and and, uh, and I was walking. And, and right behind, in the alley, right behind our hotel was this dirt uh, alley where there were all these mule carts in there with them, and they, all these peasants were selling ginseng roots and astragalus roots, still with the mud on the roots and everything. And it was so fascinating to me. I just, God, I just walked back thousands of years walking into this alley, and the, like they were out there all night doing that in the night. Then in the day, they would go harvest, and come back the next night um so i'd watch the mule carts roll in and out of town and i was so fascinated that um we came back to america and she found a book by this guy named ron teagarden and uh, it was it was his first book called chinese tonic herbs yep. this was in 19 uh, i should shouldn't date myself but like 1985 and uh, and so <laughs> and so um 
So uh, we started making tinctures from, you know, ginseng and hosho wu. And I just noticed this because I was a guy that didn't necessarily eat right at that time. I drank a lot of beer. I would eat hamburgers and french fries. And uh, I knew about health food, but I, I was in a phase, right? I was in a reckless phase of my life. Like yeah, a lot of young guys go through, right? Hamburgers and french fries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I started noticing these tinctures I was taking. I was like, man, I could ride my bike further and faster. My, I would ride about three miles to work and back every day. And I was just more alert at work and more up. And, and like, uh, and, and everything just seemed, I seen that, that there was a deeper power that I, I knew that there, it could not have been anything but taking this ginseng tonics and stuff like that. So this stuff's for real, man. And so then, um, fast forward to 1998, she and I broke up in a real, real good way. We, we, we just decided to move on and all that. And, uh, then I came back to Los Angeles in 1998 and no, I came in 1993 and I started working as a a green juicing therapist. And uh, my father uh, had just died of cancer and it, it threw me into, um, uh, a desperate mode to help him, and I found out about green juicing, which really helped him a lot. Um, but his his uh, his associates around him, some of them were really really excited about what I was doing. Others um, were, you know, a little ambivalent, like I was stealing the show, you know, from him from his um, you know his his close uh, partners and all that, his, his his wife and all that. So uh, they didn't they didn't keep him on on the green juicing protocol, and uh, he didn't make it. But when I came back to L.A., I started just looking at myself. And I went, man, you, you know, you didn't. I didn't look that good. I didn't look very healthy. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I was doing with dad. So I started making green juices. And within weeks, people started saying, man, what are you, what are you doing? You know. So I said, there's something in health. So then I started uh, like saying, well, if people get sick, I'm going to just make them juice. And I was living at the Los Angeles Eco Village, and I, I created their gardens. So I was oh. doing a little CSA there in their gardens. And uh, so I had this whole garden I was tending uh, in exchange for rent. And so uh, I had barely a penny to my name, but um, and I was I had this fresh food all the time. So I started going to people's homes and making them juice. They were really sick. I would find I hear about somebody who's really sick. I'd go make them juice for free just to find out. So I did that for five years. And then at the end of the five years, I got into a, a, a situation with a, a client I had that I couldn't help her. She had uh, multiple sclerosis, and I just didn't, didn't have a clue about you know issues like autoimmune and all that. And I made a desperate prayer. This was in 1998, and this is really true. I swear, I made a I made a prayer one morning. I woke up looking at the ceiling, and kind of in a state of um, because a newspaper article ad was going to come out about me as a healer that some lady took out for me to, as a healer. And I really didn't know anything. And, and that was going to come out that day. And I went, God, wait a minute. I'm, I'm one of those quacks they talk about, the charlatan type person, right? I don't know. Jack, you know, so, so I said, please, God, give me a teacher now. And that very night I, I met, I walked into a space and there was Master Herbalist Ron Teagarden going to speak. Wow. And I went up to him and said, uh, sir, I'm a big fan. And he said, uh, I'll come tomorrow. So I came to his place and he then, uh, I made a tea for him immediately the next morning and took it up to him to drink. And after he tasted it, he said, he, he went like this. He went, mm. first thing he said was, he said, let me see your finger. Let me see your hand. And he, he looked at my finger and noticed, he said, Mm, you've got the dust of the herbs under your fingernails. You'll be a true herbalist. Wow, <laughs> and then that's he goes, so cool. And then, yeah, I know. And then he, then he goes, let me, and he, and he goes, where's my tea? And I, I, he drank a sip of me. He went like this. He went, and he looked at me and he said, you're my tea master. Oh my <laughs> so God, I became, that's I became amazing. his uh, personal tea master for eight years. Wow. And, wow. and he taught me in this lineage called the Gate of Life, which is a 5,000-year-old lineage, which has been taught traditionally by master people. It's an eight-year apprenticeship. And so I am, was extremely, and I am extremely, uh, you know, uh, fortunate in this life to have been given a, 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 the, 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 the traditional master pupil uh, apprenticeship of eight years directly with, you know, the master every single day, except for Saturday and Sundays. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, it, it's just like, wow, you know, I, I'm, I'm so fortunate for that. Uh, then uh, forces were called me to called me to leave him in 2006 and neither one of us wanted to go but um i was called to go on my own by you know forces of destiny and i formed shaman shack and went from there amazing and and that is why we sit here today what an incredible story i mean prayer works yeah. and being in alignment yeah. works and clearly taking herbs that align those chakras and those energy points work so yeah, yeah and as a woman especially i know from you working with so many of my friends that you're an expert in woman women's health. Yeah, so, that's my passion. Well, really oh my is. gosh. Okay. Well, in honor of the Women's March this weekend. Yes, absolutely. I would love I'm to pick your it. brain 
about women's health specifically, um, yes. since you are the supreme master herbalist, as Ron Teagarden named you. And I wish I had a magic yeah, superior, wand. Superior herbalist. You gave me a Su title. Huh? Supreme yeah. superior. Supreme superior and master. So, yes, as, <laughs> okay. as the supreme herbalist that you are, and, you know, I actually, I mean, I've, I've known of you and I've known you for years and years and years. I used to go to the old dragon herbs or yeah. dragon yeah. herbs and then i went to ron tea gardens place um beverly melrose i've just yeah. followed you forever uh the yeah. tonic bar air Wand, you're you are the master so yeah as the master would you please tell us about women's health how can we as women stay vibrant not moody during pms have a healthy transition through menopause all that stuff yeah Thank you. I'll try and be as concise as I can because, you know, women are complex creatures. I know. <laughs> uh, and so whenever you discuss women's health, you have to take into account three primary uh, or four primary components. One is blood physiology because women lose blood regularly through menstrual periods. Well, I will say this. Sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. um, from my studies, I'm a Hippocrates Health Institute health educator, and from my studies of women's health, women – only women who are unhealthy bleed during their periods. I know that's crazy because most mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. bleed. I don't know if you've even heard of that, but um, mm -hmm. like what well, if you're it makes in, sense. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, it, it, it so makes sense we don't have point. to lose blood if we're vibrant, but like that's mm -hmm. just a side note because this is about women's health, so I wanted to say it, but like it infuriates me about doctors putting these athletic high school girls on the pill or athletic yeah. women on the pill because, oh, you stopped getting your period, you need to go on the pill. No, they are menstruating. Those girls are dropping eggs. They're just not yes. bleeding because they're athletes and they're supremely healthy. That was my yeah. side note. Sorry. If, no, I, I agree with that. I, I've never heard a term in, in, entirely like that, but I've said many times to women, if you're having inovulatory cycles or, I mean, yes, you must, you want to ovulate, definitely want to ovulate, but if you're not having, having bleeding cycles, it's fine, you know, uh, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. But then if a woman gets on the pill for a while and then tries to go off and reestablish re her fertility cycles, maybe wants to have a child or something, uh, it can take a little while to reestablish uh, the hormone phys hormone synthesis in order to trigger the, the the various phases of the moon cycle, in which I'll try and touch into a little bit. But um, the, the the four primary components I always like to, to outline in the beginning of it is yes, blood physiology. Why do women bleed so? Why do human females bleed so much? No other animals bleed this much at all, and um, it, I do consider it an anomaly. And um, and I think that there are ways to mitigate the amount. And yes, the degree of a woman's health will definitely uh, relate to the degree at which she bleeds. Um, a very healthy woman who eats a high living food diet will have, um, hopefully bleed less. But there are other factors. The other component you must take into account is the functions of the spleen meridian, which is, the, the, is an energy meridian that includes the stomach, the spleen, the duodenum, the pancreas, and the small intestine. This is called the spleen meridian. It's it's our metabolic energy center. And that is where the blood is tailored with chi. Uh, and, and so chi is the vital energy of the sun. Of sun, of the sun. And so my equation that I talk about in my book, Raw Chi, is how, uh, how do we get sunlight into our – how does sunlight wind up in our blood? Now, that issue is really critical for women because women lose this vital resource every month, some of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so now we want to recapture – regather that sunlight back into the blood and reestablish what we call upright chi so that the blood is flowing warm hands and feet the blood is staying up a nice sexy ovulation and when all that occurs then the menstrual period should be light a couple days no more than a tablespoon of bright red blood with no emotional turmoil and no pain that's that should be normal and even then, I think that's somewhat, uh, I don't I know, uh, human uh, females uh, somehow at some point uh, started to ovulate according to the moon and then the moon cycle, the, the, the cycle uh, attuned to the moon and, uh, and and became monthly like that, where other animals don't have it that often, of course. But um, so those are mysterious things that go way back and who knows, probably some pagan day uh, you know, witchy women women know about it, you know. Totally. Uh, but uh, I must say, being a man, I, that's a part I don't know. But Well, it's interesting that you talked about the spleen because as a raw vegan, I've heard <clears throat> that eating such a cooling raw diet dampens the spleen. So uh, it's interesting uh, uh -huh. that you touched on well, that. Well, that yeah. is really going to wind up being the crux of our discussion. Wow. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Um, the third uh, component we must discuss is hormone synthesis. 
and hormones, and again, the spleen function and the metabolism is, is a, hormone synthesis is a, is, a, is a, it's important for hormone synthesis as well. So we'll go into that, you know, progesterone being a master hormone, and from there the three primary estrogens are synthesized from progesterone. So what is the, what is the process of that synthesis and all that? What, does the, what, is, what role does the spleen play in our bodies? What is the spleen? Can you explain that? Okay. Well, this is something that the Chinese figured out a long time ago, and it's really, really brilliant that they, they understood this. And um, in Western physiology, we just see the spleen as kind of a half organ, half gland. It's a little bit not really fully understood. Um, but what we do know about the spleen um, is that it is a reservoir of uh, that holds red and white blood cells. Oh, okay. Now, the reason that the Chinese looked at the whole uh, digestive organs and recognized that that place needs to stay warm and dry and water can build up there with women and things, so that's what we're going to discuss. Uh, and that affects you know, moon cycles and everything. But um, when, the when the Chinese looked at this, um, they knew the spleen was where the beginning of the, where the blood begins to be tailored uh, to hold this vital sunlight called qi. Cool. And, uh, and the reason for that is because um, as the blood leaves the lungs, it's oxygenated. Now it goes through the aortal valve of the heart and it goes into the splenic artery. A lot of the blood goes through the spleen wow. first before. And there is where white blood cells, which are immune, and, and, they're, and they're, they, they're called macrophages. They're these big cells that will, will, will destroy uh, old dead cells. So the old, dead, non-vital red blood that's no longer red is kind of blue blood and dark, and it can't really hold hemoglobin, and it can't really attain new iron. It's old. They're, they've lived out their life cycle, their old red blood cells. The white blood cells phagocytize them in the spleen. So in other words, the spleen tailors the red blood to only the blood that leaves the spleen can hold chi. That's why they call it the spleen meridian. I, I love explaining that because I don't think it's ever really been explained. <laughs> I've never had it explained. So does that yeah. mean, is that, can you tell that your spleen is working when you have bright red blood during your menstrual cycle? Is that why you say you want it to yeah. be bright red? Wow, uh, interesting. That's, that's partly uh, uh, the equation, yeah. So it has also to do with hormones too, but uh, yeah, cool. really the nature of the blood. And the, the Chinese say the blood is the, is the, is the, is the, is the mother of chi or their chi. You know, blood is the carrier of chi. It carries chi to the body. Chi is the vital energy, the warm hands and feet, upright chi, glow in the skin, all that, right. you know, and good metabolism, right? That's all chi. And uh, so how does that chi carry, you know, to the extremities, to the cells in the blood? And, uh, and so we want the blood to leave the spleen bright, nice, bright red blood that's been oxygenated as it passed through the lung avials. It's gone now through the spleen. Now it's uh, tailored to... Only the good stuff is going and coursing through the arteries of the pancreas and the stomach and the duodenum and the small intestine where it's picking up nutrients in the form of hemoglobin. But here's a big, big important equation we need to discuss. Iron. Iron is the big issue. Yeah. The, when, this, when the uh, blood cells are passing through the digestive organs, particularly du duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, uh, there is where iron ions are inserted into the red blood cells to reinvigorate, to make them red again. So that, that's what makes the blood red is iron. Yes. There's four iron ions inside every blood cell. That takes chi. It takes warmth. It takes warmth to render that iron out of its food substrate and n nourish the blood with it. So the factory of the spleen system needs to be a place that is warm and dry. You need to imagine the spleen is the stovetop cooker of your of your of your body, and you want to imagine a, a hot burner on that stovetop burner is is your pancreas and your spleen underneath that pot of tea that is the stomach. You want that flame nice and hot. And then when that's the case, the body can, yeah, there you go, warming your spleen right now. Hot and that's tea, the, warming my spleen. Yeah. <laughs> and so when, when then, when uh, the blood is, um, is the, the whole area is, is warm, uh, the, the body can uh, better metabolize through that warmth, you know, the food, breaking it down in what's called chyme. Chyme is a sort of a soup, and then it goes into the duodenum, where it starts to be extracted through the walls of the duodenum, small intestine. And then that is hemoglobin attaches to the, and then the iron ions are, are, are rendered into the cells via that nice warm spleen. Now, the iron has its oxygen, the, 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 the blood cell has oxygen molecules and iron ions. Now, it can hold hemoglobin and it has chi. It's bright red and it has the vital energy to do what we call, uh, support what we call upright chi. So now, the chi is going to be going up like this. Warm hands and feet, like I said, glow in the skin and good weight management. 
nice metabolism of food. Um, now, conversely, here's what happens a lot of the time. Um, we're eating foods that are devitalized and don't have enough chi in them, and that's why we talk a lot about the raw food diet. But there are some equations here that we want to discuss. I talked about this in my all of this all of this is in my book Raw Chi, which you can get on Amazon. It is an it's just a six ninety nine book. book or, incredible uh, book. Yeah, Raw Chi, mm -hmm. and it discusses female uh, 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 metabolism, in particular men too. We look, we don't leave guys out of that equation in that book, but. Um, and so we want – a lot of women are walking around with, with uh, moisture retention around the middle part of the body as edema, causing the hips to widen a little bit. When this happens, it dampens the spleen. And why does this happen? The Chinese say that men and women have are, have different constitutions. They say the man has a yang constitution, which is somewhat fiery. We burn up, we get dry, we get dehydrated. But women have what we call a yin constitution, which is conducive to holding water. And the female body is designed to expand. The pelvic bones are designed to expand outward to the sides. And, and, and the female body down in the, in the middle and lower jaw of the body there is designed to expand and hold masses. So the, the body is, is of content with masses occurring in the form of edema um, and other forms of uh, you know stagnant energy that could turn into uh, cysts and endometriosis and things like that and, and heavy uh, you know, uh, cramping and all that. And the, and so these are all forms of what we call chi stagnation. Now, if a, it, it does, again, come back to what you're eating because we need to look at that sunlight. You know, and we say, are we gathering sunlight through the leaves of this salad, or are we gathering sunlight through a box of pancake mix? How much right. sand, How much sunlight is in that, right? right. How much sunlight is in a, a rice cracker, right? But so we want the sunlight in the food. That's what we call enzymes, right? When that goes into the body, uh, we have some of that warmth and the, the already the components for breaking that food down and rendering the chi out of are already inherent in the food and not, they haven't been uh, cooked and killed and taken out through some kind of processing, right. which, which so much of our food is processed. Mm -hmm. You're and a lot of it and now is grown in ways where it's it's grown uh, it's it's a the way they grow do a lot of corporate agriculture is they excessively irrigate it so that yeah. this plant a bolt a bundle of water just comes up really fast and then they cut it unripe. And so that you know, it's, and so there again, there's not a, uh, as much chi in that as if you were getting like wild foods or growing in your backyard, That's that kind right. of thing. And they're weak; they're weakling. It's because they're spoiled. They're they're watered they've been, all the time. They've been they genetically to, manipulated a lot. Yeah, they don't have to dig deep with their roots to get the the lower nutrients down in the yeah. depths of the soil. They're baby weak, and then we're eating uh -huh. those weaklings. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. yeah, wilder uh -huh. baby, which does underscore. The importance of going to your farmer's market, uh, make friends with, with the farmers you like, um, ask them. If a farm is over uh, an acre it, large, it's it's probably too large. You know, it's better to be an acre or two at the most. Um, that way they can really you know, hand tend the plants and don't have to use chemicals and that kind of stuff. And hand compost stuff, you know, if it's smaller like that. Um, nice. So you want to get in touch. You get in touch with your farmers and find out when they picked it. You know, was it right? Did they pick it the night before, or, and all that. Um, and so anyway, there's there's chi in that food. So then when we eat that, we want to masticate, salivate. So that's the first enzyme. Is, is slow down and chew. When we eat raw food. We got to chew a lot more. Mm -hmm. Then this goes in and breaks down, and we we break we we get the chi out, and so the place it, it must be warm in the stomach. And then that chi goes into the blood, and then that that supports what we call upright chi now. She is flowing, glowing to the skin, warm hands and feet. Now, that's going to wind up benefiting the menstrual cycle because here is the, um, the, two, um, um, the two components of the moon cycle. The first phase, called the ovular phase, begins right when a woman is finished having a menstrual period. And then what happens uh, then is that a woman just lost some blood. So some vital chi of her body is now uh, gone from the body. And so... And Mother Nature designed it this way on purpose in many ways. Um, the body is now about one degree cooler in temperature uh, mm -hmm. after the menstrual period. So all the way up until ovulation, about 15 days, your body's going to be about one degree cooler. That is why women go in a little bit more of a withdrawn energy and feel colder and everything during the ovular phase. Huh. And uh, it's, sometimes it's associated with estrogen, thinking that estrogen is some kind of irritable hormone. But no, it's more that the body's just a little bit cooler. And so a woman is just not going to be as outgoing, you know, her boyfriend and might be one like, come on, baby, let's, you know, let's have some fun. You're like, mm, I'm not in the mood right now. You know, it's just like it's not the energy just isn't there, right? You know, let's meditate and so, together on opposite <laughs> ends of the couch. Yeah, and so, um, but then what happens is during this time, with the body being one degree cooler, 
and you're going to see the blood, what we call trickling down. Um, it, it's settling down, and some blood is entering into the uterine cavity and forming this lining in there that would become a placenta if, if a woman gets pregnant. Wow. It gets inseminated. So the lining is now there, and that and that finishes stuff, uh, filling that lining up in the, in the uterus uh, during the ovular phase. And then when that's done, about day uh, starting maybe 13, 14, uh, the eggs now have also been preparing to come out of, the, of their ovaries during the ovular phase. So there are uh, about maybe up to 100 eggs uh, reaching the walls of the ovaries. And then all of a sudden, on about the 13th, 14th day, these, these uh, gonadotropin-releasing hormones and luteinizing hormones called from the pituitary uh, triggers some heat in the body via the adrenals. And so you have a little warm warm up and that then that, the extra warmth in the body causes the eggs to rupture out of the wall the ovary and they go sit wow. in the end of the fallopian tube and they wait for this sperm to come wow. so the female the female waits to, to, for the male to show valiance right she's mm -hmm. okay i'm ready to see and then the sperm's got to swim from here to san francisco to wow. get to the egg you know and uh so it's got that na nature needs the female needs to show the ma make have the male show valiance you Love know that. and so that's the way it is and um, and so um, now the eggs wait there, uh, and then uh, the young lady's not inseminated. So uh, in, in the case we're talking about, and so then the um, after about you know uh, fifteen more days, you have some time in there to be impregnated. And uh, now when the eggs, when when the when this uh, luteinizing hormone triggers the release of the eggs. That little site where the eggs come out of is called corpus luteum, and corpus luteum. Sorry, I forgot that's to turn what myself. they sound like when they're coming out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> corpus luteum. Uh, the little site, the little rupture site of corpus luteum is where is where progesterone starts to uh, oh. be synthesized, be uh, of, you know come into the body via that site, that corpus luteum. So now, progesterone rises in ovulation. And progesterone is a master female hormone that's associated with your fertility, your vul your, vul your voluptuousness. And so when, when progesterone comes up, uh, the skin starts to get a glow in the cheeks, even even starts to, like there's just things that happen to the skin to make it kind of glow, like these little oils sort of come out that give you a glow. Hair can look silkier, um, everything, you know, and you, you warm up about one degree. Your body winds up reestablishing re the normal temperature, <clears throat> which suddenly you're like, wow. I feel warm. I want to go dancing. <laughs> right? It's all part of the fertility dance. That's right? awesome. So that's now, that's um, when you're ovulating, when the female yeah. is ovulating. Yes. Okay. Fortunately, human females develop what we call cryptic ovulatory cycles so that men don't know when you're ovulating. Right. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> or else you don't want all the guys well, to know the, you're ovulating. Exactly. It wouldn't be yeah. very fun. Exactly. Line uh, up. We're making a baby. Uh, <laughs> well, they'll know because yeah. they want to go dancing. Come on, yeah, baby, right. date night. They want to go dancing, yeah. and, and it's like part of the whole. You know, it's like uh, you know, and you know, it's all the, that's the fun part. Now, you want that. You really want that warmth to come back at that time because what that does is that reestablishes the you know, uh, is it ninety eight point six uh, temperature of the body, the the, the uh, regular temperature of the body. So then that that, that uh, ideally then stops the downward trickling of the chi the blood into the uterine cavity that stops it and then the blood reestablishes what we call upright chi that's why you got the glow you got you're warmer and everything so then the blood is going to discontinue continuing up to you know pile up in the in the in the, in the, uh, in the uterus now here's the situation though if the young girl doesn't get a really good warm ovulation uh and she's not eating warm chi food the body can can remain uh, not in the proper temperature at ovulation, and what happens is too much. The blood continues trickling down, and too much blood enters into the uterine cavity, and what we get we get the, the dark, thick, darker, thicker blood because there's not that much chi in the blood. Then, because as I was saying, when it goes through the spleen, you want it to turn bright red with all that new iron and everything. If that's not happening, then it's darker, thicker blood is in the body, and it's it's entering into the it building up in the uterine cavity and doing it cramping. And now, if it's if it's really dark and thick, that's going to affect the liver. The liver has to deal with what we call chi stagnation in the blood and that's where PMS comes from is the liver the liver is the seat of the emotions Wow I get very angry about the state of affairs of the world a lot and that is when I get cramps so very interesting very interesting <laughs> I'm like well I don't blame you for being angry about the state of the world and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really really what excited can we to do see about it? it that's why you're here help us Romania yes yeah. this is this is so fascinating, and it's uh, yeah. so incredible that you know so much about the woman's body and cycles, and 
yeah, I mean, you, yeah. I know firsthand. I, I know. prayed. I prayed for answers, and then uh, I looked at a lot of Western uh, Doctor John Lee, and then I looked at the, what the Chinese were saying, and I came with some great equations. I'm getting ready to talk yeah, about. Yeah, what do we do? Okay, how do uh, yeah. we fix all of these things? My whole orientation too is to is to really, uh, you know, re empower our women to, uh, you know, take that power and uh, and uh, you were we're at a tipping point, you know, where the feminine really must. Uh, come back because we need to restore. We need to restore the Earth's biology, that's right. and that's going to feminine right. energy. Even if the men, I mean, we men are doing that too, but we'll be expressing the feminine energy back. Oh, planting you're so, seeds, you're right? So beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, and that's why I have you here on this Women's March anniversary here to, this weekend, the weekend of the Women's March. That is why March, you March, are featured on this show because you are that kind of man who honors women. And not one arrest, I don't think, occurred. Yay! <laughs> anyway. That's because it was women marching. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, and, and so, yeah, uh, we want... We, now, here's another way uh, we can make sure that we get a nice, warm ovulation. And I like to call it a warm, sexy ovulation. You want to feel sexy when you ovulate. Love that. One way to do that for women is to have orgasms. Now, if orgasms are good for women. And uh, orgasms move chi. They, they, they help... Uh, and so around the time of your ovulation, you want to have some orgasms with, your, with a partner. You can teach them, uh, you know, safe ways to do it. Uh, and or you can, of course, you know, do it yourself. But it is a Take great care thing. of yourself, ladies. You do it during ovulation. You have to. Women want to. Um, it's like giving yoga to that area down there. It's like a flushing the tubes and, run, you know, uh, hormones and, and all these pheromone hormones and everything are kind of flushing in there that are progesterone related. And, and so your femininity is heightened through doing this, you know. Um, on the contrary, men should avoid too much semen release. We, sh we can masturbate all we want, but we should not release our semen. That's, that we lose our power. But when a woman masturbates, she doesn't drop an egg, drop eggs out of her body. Awesome. So that's the, the way to see it. It just kind of runs everything around, lubricates everything real good. Um, and that can also help with, with avoiding the buildup of chi stagnation in the form of like cysts and polyps and things like that. Hmm. Um, and so um, we want to gather the chi, masticate, salivate, make sure it's warm. Right now in winter with things cold, I don't recommend a high raw diet. Especially, I think you live up in Seattle somewhere yeah, up in there. Yeah, very damn. No, I don't think it's a good idea. Even here in L.A. right now, it's cold and wet and rainy. Oh, yeah. I've been eating sweet potatoes and squashes and They're miso soup. And, perfect. Um, but well, what I wanted to ask you about is for people who don't want to stray away from the raw food diet, I know that you can recommend herbal tinctures and tonics yeah. that will do the same thing. Yeah. Where they don't have to eat cooked foods. They can just eat cooked, heated Tonics yeah. that will heat their bodies yeah. up properly. That we'll, is we'll um, what I yeah. am really excited about. Okay. Because um, I'm a vegetarian of about 30 years, and yeah. um, I understand that, like many people are saying, I believe that we must become a vegetarian race um, now. And so, but we have a bit of a conundrum here because when we go back to the iron equation, uh, iron was the, one of the reasons uh, that. We believe, and I read this great book by a doctor named Leonard Schlein. It's called Sex, Time, and Power. It's probably my favorite book ever in the world. Wow. Um, and he was saying too that many of these things. So it's like, a, but but the the you know the we, we it's it's a it's an anomaly why women are, are bleeding so much. But we think it's because of the, during Paleolithic times when we discovered fire and how to make weapons, we became excellent hunters, and we started to eat high amounts of meat. Uh, and we no longer, when we were hunter gatherers, we would eat what we could get. But when we became hunters only, pretty much, uh, meat became our primary diet, and and so we were getting too much iron. We were getting an excess amount of iron, and this could be why I think, and I've never read this, and even Doctor Schlein didn't say this, but it could be why I think that women are having uh, such heavy menstrual cycles compared to other ant, ma other mammals, um, because of the excess amount of meat that we eat. Now that's a genetic imprint at this point, because we've been doing it for a long time, about 150,000 years at least. And so, how do we start to change this equation? Well, the wonderful thing that we have is the Chinese never were a big meat-eating race. They ate a little bit of pork and some fish and a lot of chicken and duck and that kind of thing, but they never ate red meat. They didn't have cows. Yeah. And so they had to find out how to keep their women from getting anemic.
because because you see we're getting all this iron called heme iron from these animals mm -hmm. and heme iron is very very readily accessible into our blood whereas plant-based iron is not as easily assimilable into the blood that's called ferric iron and animal derived iron is called ferrous iron so the animals sort of manufactured the tailor the iron to be easy for us to assimilate into our blood that's why women sometimes just feel like god i just gotta go eat a piece of meat you know every once in a while Ooh, and, uh, i don't it's know not i don't know i well i've read different stuff about all that but i yeah no i respect what you're saying and i have read that too well i've heard that it's i mean i've read that it's your parasites that are craving the meat and the sugar it's not you it's your parasites but i understand uh -huh. i i've heard all uh -huh. this before yeah the parasites um would crave things more in, this, in the form of the simple sugars like sweets. But uh, when you're craving meat, what it is, your body's actually wanting iron. Your body's needing iron. So um, I talk to women all the time. I say, yeah, sometimes I just have this incredible craving for some meat, and I have to break down eating. and I feel a little better after when I'm like, yeah, it's the iron. It's not the protein. Um, but yeah, you know, you could, yeah, I mean, any food that's acid forming in the body um, is particularly sugar, though, is where the parasites, you know, they, they like those fast simple sugars from donuts and things like that and bread beer <laughs> but yeah. um and but dead rotting flesh but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. mostly right. simple sure. sugars but and flesh but um yeah where can we get See, that iron if we're not willing to eat a dead murdered corpse well exactly yeah <laughs> well women are, are, are seeking uh you know uh ferrous iron supplements and you always want to look for it to be a ferrous iron supplement with it just remember an s on the end of the ferrous not ferric uh uh and but uh, what, what the Chinese did was they always they searched for herbs over the centuries to keep their women from becoming anemic, and they found a specific herb that I'm really really excited about because I think it's going to be part of our evolution into a vegetarian race, and it's called Dong Guai. Yes, that's yeah. amazing. I love. It's amazing for men too. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Because men, vegan men, get anemic too. Yeah. And uh, so guys like T. Colin Campbell and stuff could be looking at this information, you know, when they talk about the about the benefits of veganism. They could be looking at tonic herbal elixirs as well. And you know, Dr. Gabriel Cousins is really into it now. He's a good friend of mine. He's all yeah. into this. But um, – and so we – the Chinese found herbs that – that uh, – that can build, we call build blood. So dong guai, legusticum, and then other herbs that assist that, like the system of moving of blood, white peony root, longan, uh, and romania, my namesake herb, is a nice blood builder, also time finds a kidney and anti-aging herb. But uh, you can put these together in formulas in order to help the body, what we call build blood. Another quickly quick way to do it too, what Chinese women do, is uh, af directly after the menstrual cycle, beginning a new moon cycle, you can take some spinach and put dong guai with the spinach and steam it lightly, and that'll break up and open up the spinach so the iron is more easily assimilable, and then the spinach will help you assimilate the iron. Wow. And I still, it's not known exactly how yet, yes. how the dong wai works exactly. Uh, so I can't exactly say. I, I've, I read through all the studies, and there's no definitive evidence of exactly how, but hey, you know, empirical observation shows it works. I mean, for thousands of years now, women have been using it effectively in China on people. That's right. Um, and so, Sometimes God doesn't want to be fully known. You yeah, know, yeah, there could be. Are, we have to have some mystery, equation. Honey. Gotta have some <laughs> mystery. Well, do you at Shaman Shack, shamanshackherbs.com, do you yeah. have a formula that you've created for yeah. that? The mm -hmm. the blood building formula? I have I have one formula. I decided to create one formula for women and I call it women's complete. I uh, just yes. got it online. And uh, because I really, again, here's another thing. I, you know, I was looking at like women's marketing products to women, and I was like, it's so excessive. There's so many products that could be combined that are separated from to make more money, yep. and then put in some great big box with a great big plastic, great inside of a hemp bag with a plastic wrapper. And it's oh like, yeah, oh, you know, with you know, free gift, with free gift. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh right. God. It's on and all that to entice you in. But, you know, I just looked at it and said, you know, the Chinese Materia Medica is so sophisticated that the components that I mentioned to you earlier, which are blood building, spleen, sheet tonification, and hormone synthesis, you can do them all in one formula. And, and I was thinking about doing them separate formulas, and I could have been a capitalist and done that and tried to take advantage of women, you know. But I said, no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to put it all in one. So it's called Women's Complete. The blood building component is Dong Guai with white peony to, to move the blood, and then longan, which nourishes the heart and blood, and romania is in there to nourish yeah. the blood. It takes a little kidney. We need you. Then we the need you in there. 
to warm the spleen to help with metabolism, which helps with weight management, by the way, because if, if the spleen gets damp, that's water edema, and that's the, that's the culprit in this whole thing, is if the spleen gets damp, you're throwing water on your flame of your metabolism. Wow. And so we need to, what we call, dry and warm the middle jowl without going to the adrenals. That's the key. We don't want to, if we try and stimulate the adrenals for energy, we call, that, we call that false fire. Yeah. What we want to do is we want to go f- turn that flame up on a stovetop cooker there under the, under the stone, right? Yes. And so they found herbs to do that. The Chinese figured this stuff out. So there's an entity of herbs, so four herbs, and it is white Attractylodes, Poria, a very famous herb. They say is, is a, it transforms damp into chi. It's famous in history for women, Chinese women who who were famous for having a nice shape and figure. Huh. And then um, Cotinopsis, they call ginseng for women. It's a warming chi herb. And then Jujube date. Those four are what we call an, uh, an entity. There's a group of herbs that are put together that create something that's more powerful than the sum of the parts. It's, it's a wonderful, uh, it's been used for centuries for uh, helping women warm the middle jail on the spleen. Can any women take it or is it like, yeah. because yeah. I've, I've read so much about supplements, but maybe herbs yeah. don't fall into that category where if uh-huh. you take a supplement, it can be just as damaging as taking, or very expensive urine. But just as damaging as taking a pharmaceutical drug if you don't need it. But is that uh-huh. not the case with these herbs? Herbs and supplements are, are often different. I mean, supplements, herbs are called supplements, but they're really, many supplements are things that our body's supposed to produce on its own. That's right. why it's called a supplement. Right. But like many of our vitamins in our body should be synthesized from the food we eat, you know, and, and, and derived from the food we eat. But, right. um, but, uh, Herbs are a little bit different. They're, they're nature's uh, you know helpers for us, and they work similar to food, but they work in a slightly different way. They have more complex phytochemistry, and many times that phytochemistry has to be unlocked out of its substrates because it's oftentimes found in like woody roots and barks and things like that. So you have to cook it and cook the tea and, un- and extract the, the component you want out of its yeah. uh, lignin cellulose. You know, so I'm, it makes I'm it in a different it. class than food, but it, it, it winds up going in different places. But in my uh, lineage, in the gate of life. And one thing I'm really excited about it is not it's not a TCM lineage of Chinese medicine. It's actually a um, a system of superfoods that was hidden in China, and, and only these uh, monks and these people way up in the mountains who were considered to be immortals they they knew about it all wow. of this five thousand years, and they focused on a class of herbs called tonic herbs. Now, by the way, when you say to tonify, or you, uh, it means to uh, bring the strings of an instrument into tone. That's a Greek word. So what we're trying to do is bring the frequencies of our body into harmony. So these ancient masters who were living in the mountains, they sought herbs to help us bring our bodies and mind and spirit into harmony. And tonic herbs are said to do that. So they're not considered medicine. They don't push you. They don't go, ah, you know. They, they more like go, ah. You know, they, they go in deep and just hold you up from down below, you know, go to the kidneys and tonify. That's your real root of your true health. And the spleen is, a, is the root of your metab- metabolic and daily energy needs, you know, to, to nourish these things from below. So really, uh, pretty much anyone can take tonic herbs. Okay. Everyone is unique, though. And so we do pulse readings where we determine, like, exactly what someone needs and we help tailor them. But many times you'll have a lot of the same herbs in, in, the, in the two formulas for two different people. Um, but the herbs that tonify the spleen and build blood, I think they're universal for all people. Uh, most women can tend to uh, hold water edema. Now, you do have a, a small class of women who go the other way where they can't even put on weight, and they're cold too, and they got a cold spleen, but they can't put on weight. And that usually means the spleen is underactive, and they're just not getting any kind of nutrient assimilation, plus they're also uh, removing any dampness that occurs. That they're not able to put on weight. Yeah, it's still cold like that with menstrual problems and constipation, loose stool, and these kind of things. And so there all comes down to warming the spleen, really. And the spleen, again, again, is where the blood is tailored. So uh, I remember when I was first working with Ron Teagarden, and I, I was at a, a walking through a farmer's market one day, and I met this, uh, this Chinese woman who used to come in there and kind of complain at all us because she thought we weren't, weren't trained enough in my early days there. And she would just look at me and she'd go, the spleen, the spleen. <laughs> You're like, I know, I know. <laughs> well, Ron's my I didn't mentor. know yet at the time. I knew, but I didn't really know, but she was right. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Wow. It's like the universe has sent you all of these Chinese women to guide you. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You're so tapped in. No, that's incredible. I'm going to order the formula. I'm going to get a hold of Bryn up here or just order it online. I can't wait. I I, I mean, like everything you described, I could definitely use Uh balance with all those areas, in all those areas. So. I'm yeah, and at wintertime, uh, you know, like you said, yams are great. 
uh, black bean soups and stews and miso and dal and those things are great. Mm-hmm. Springtime, you do your green juice fast. Summer, all raw, no problem. When, fall, go back to starchy foods a little bit. That's when they're right. Just follow what's right when, you know. Definitely. And eat that, you know. Definitely. So, yeah. No, Those that's things. stay that's warm. Even, stay warm and, and yeah. uh, have a good, warm, sexy ovulation and uh, and eat living food. Uh, chew well, cook it carefully. You know, take tonic herbal elixir, especially now in the winter time. You know, women's complete. It tastes great too, by the way. I, I forgot to ask say. I mean, that because I uh, tonic herbs actually taste really that. good. It's I, when, yeah. uh, people are re- just delighted okay, when they taste this. You know? Good. I went to Yo Sam Clinic when I used to live in Marina del Rey in L.A. and yeah. My herbalist there, gave, my Chinese medicine doctor, gave me this pouch of herbs that I prepared in my, you know, pot on the stove, my clay pot, and it was disgusting. Yeah. It was like, you need yeah. this, you need this. It was disgusting, but yeah. I drank it because I needed it. But no, I, it's a it's a relief. I was going to ask you that, so that's good. Yep. Yay! Yeah. I can't I wait get to, to try ask that it. all the time. In fact, last night I was at Peace Yoga in L.A. and uh, a young lady there working behind the bar said she was going to do an elixir bar, and she said, oh, "I can't drink those Chinese teas." I said to her, and she she went back and made it for everybody. She made some of my shift formula, oh. and she was she was from Germany and one of those kind of young women who's really really hard to get through you know the skin you know, and she was like, "No, I don't I don't want to take it. Might hurt me." And, I, and she came back and she goes. It's really good, <laughs> you know. It's like I get that a lot. I mean, it's like uh, universal because the, the tonic herbs are not. Again, they're not medicinal. So the more medicinal an herb is, the more it's bitter. The more bitter it's going to taste, and the more of superfood oriented it is, it's more going to have like a polysaccharide sugars and nice, you know, things in it that are kind of a uh, kind of sweet almost. You know, like goji goji berry is a tonic herb. Astragalus oh tastes great. It's really sweet. You know? Oh my Ocean gosh! Blue. Amazing! I'm yeah. so excited to try the women's formula, and then. What do you recommend for men? Or is that, is, yeah. Yeah, now, when we look at guys, uh, men, of course, uh, we don't refresh our blood as readily as women do. So women do have mechanisms to ref- refresh the blood. Um, but like we don't get to do that. So infusion. what happens with men is our blood winds up getting a bit rusty almost, uh, like iron, bad iron in, in the blood. Um, and so men, uh, a, a great thing a guy can do, and I know this is a bit involved, but be, uh, um, is uh, in spring, do a green juice fast for about 14 days on green juices. Then go uh, and do a cleanse protocol. Like I have a formula called Deep Cleanse that's not yet on Shaman Shack Herbs, but I, I have it. And uh, it's a wonderful one for spring, anytime really. But in springtime, a guy can go through a jar of that while doing a cleanse fast. He, that's, he's going to benefit so much from that anyway. Wow. But then, then at the end of that fast cleanse, go donate blood. Yes. And then, yes. then take a, a jar of Women's Complete to rebuild some fresh blood. Awesome. And uh, it's a process, but it would be an amazing thing for guys to do. Thank and, you. Uh, that is yeah. so awesome. I'm going to get my man on that. Thank you. Okay, the well, thing, yeah, go on. Sorry. The two things I usually say to men are, are um, slow down and chew your food. Uh, try and eat living food. Um, but slow down, chew it well. And then uh, on a sexual level, uh, I say to men, don't ejaculate too much. You know, it's uh, that's your power. You know, hold well, that. What, where, Masturbate all you want. Definitely. Where can men read about or watch a video about not not ejaculating but still like having an orgasm? Yeah, I, guess, I mean, it's, it's, it's rather easy uh, to just keep, stay at the edge. It's, it's really fun. It's very satisfying. You can stay right there without kind of, because once a guy ejaculates, he's like, oh, man, I'm done, I'm done, right? He's, he's over, right? But if you just can keep there on the edge, you, you, you sustain the good, the best part of it without going over the cliff, you know? Okay, well, and uh, so it's, uh, it's, really, it's a really nice thing to, to cultivate that. <laughs> no, I, amen. Okay, I'm, I'll work uh, on Dr. it. Dr. Montauk Chia talks about this stuff. Uh, if you want to go back to the ancient Chinese manuals, uh, in the Yellow Emperor's Classic, there's a, a the um, a Lady Su. She was the advisor for women. She was a sexual advisor for the Yellow Emperor. She wrote wow. some phenomenal stuff on this. Wow, yeah. awesome! Thank she said you. that the Jade Staff must, you know, be prepared before it goes into the Celestial Palace. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say she wrote the book on it. There we go. Oh my gosh, with that yeah. kind of. Um, that's hilarious. That kind of rhetoric. That's so yes. funny. Oh my gosh. I'm going to look into that Jade Staff Celestial Palace stuff. That's awesome. I'm all about that kind of stuff. Um, okay. Yes. And then I jumped the gun. I actually wanted to ask you about menopause for yep. women. 
Um, Because we talked about when women are ovulating, when they're bleeding, but hopefully not bleeding too much because then you're healthier. But when they go through menopause, what can they do for a healthy, smooth transition into that next stage of life? Yeah, right. Good. Uh, this is really one of my favorite topics, and I love to go out and speak about this to groups of women because um, I believe it's a tragedy that we're, we're casting off our midlife women without uh, recognizing what their what God designed midlife women to provide for our society is to be our leaders. Yes, they are designed to be our leaders, and. Uh, and so when a woman goes into midlife, she winds up, hormones shift a little bit, and the androgen hormones come up as a little bit in relation to the estrogenic hormones, and this gives a woman a little bit more of an authoritarian air. And Mother Nature did this on purpose because for two reasons. Uh, she cessates uh, ovulation at a, you know around 50-ish for two reasons. One, she's got at least 18 years of her life left to raise her youngest child, so you know that time clock went shut off there. But secondly, now the mother is presumably – uh, and not always doesn't always have to be. I mean, it, this isn't dependent on her being a grandmother by this point, right? So now she is now not no longer has the the nourishing energy of the for, to nourish the nuclear family, but now has to, to 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 take care of a larger collective. So you've got to hey, you kids, get out of that pile here. Hey, <laughs> hang on, Joe, get off that off that bottle, you know. And uh, and so mm-hmm. she's suddenly got to become more authoritarian. So the voice drops a little bit, and she becomes the matriarch of the clan. She becomes the leader of the clan. Okay. Now the and so when, when her hormones then when the the progesterone progesterone related hormones are are uh, a little reduced in relation to the androgen hormones in this process because the adrenals start to become a little more dominant after after a uh, menopause and then that then makes her her in my opinion the most hormonally balanced human. And I don't think I've ever heard anyone say this <laughs> other than I love that. my opinion here. But I think that a, a menopausal woman and postmenopausal is the most hormonally balanced human being. Therefore, she should be our leader, our, our political leader in, in our society. And now there's, okay. there's some issues with menopausal women. When a progesterone, so as I was saying, you know, when the when the eggs rupture out of the ovaries, you have that progesterone release into the system. Now that's not going to be happening. So there are phytoprogesterones that can be gotten, uh, uh, and there's an, a, a wild yam called dioscorea, and I put that in a, for, a new form of mine called Revital that I make for menopausal women. Oh wow! Uh, it's, it's not on Shaman Shack yet, but I have it. We're going to upload it soon. Good. Hopefully, by the time we get this out there, it'll be up because it'll be out soon. And uh, and so uh, Revital is – I love this formula. I'm really proud of it. Um, I feel really uh, – when I first made it, I kind of thought, well, I thought out what I would do. But then in, in retrospect, I was like, wow, this is – I'm really proud of this one. But uh, it, it utilizes this wild yam called dioscorea, which is what they make those creams out of. But the Chinese women just always took it you know, in, in tea. And, uh, and this is high in what's called diastenins, which are precursors of progesterone to help the body maintain higher progesterone. So when a woman starts going into menopause, she wants to eat foods in, that, that are higher in uh, precursors to progesterone called diastenins. So that's where all the yams are. Nice. Um, and so you look for diastenin-containing food. I think oatmeal, uh, dal. That's why dal is really popular in, China, in India with with, uh, with women. And, and so, um, you know, you want, you want to supplement a phyto uh, – Precursor to progesterone called diastenins, and and uh, there is no progesterone found in food. We have to we have to uh, in like night in, in vegetarian food. We have to uh, get the precursors to it called diastenins. Now you want that, and that's going to help then with hormone synthesis and regulation. Now here's a, a big big issue: is stress. Stress is really hurting our women. Yeah, yes. it's hurting our women because. This is why when a woman is under stress, and when, younger menstruating women too, when they're under stress, progesterone is is kind of drawn over and cross-synthesized into defense hormones. So a woman's femininity is being robbed in order to have to go like this, you wow. know, right? In order to have to change and be male-like. And the men are dropping their spears. They're not in front of the women protecting them. And suddenly mm-hmm. the women are like, oh, my God, i got to, you know. Do all everything you now. I got to protect myself. Like, where's the guy? Where's my, you know, guy? Yeah, yeah. But you no, know, women are very independent and powerful. Most many women think they don't need guys, but really, we do need each other. We need each other. Let's admit it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, conditioning ourselves to think we don't need each other is is not really uh, it's not it's something healthy. we're doing out of desperation. Yeah, it's not healthy at all. No, and uh, and so you know we want, but but we but but and so uh, you know I talk to men about their warrior stuff too. You know. But uh, women, what we need to do is to be 
is to be able to not get stressed, be like impervious to stress. We call health beyond danger. And when you take tonic herbs and a, and a healthy diet, some of those stress stress triggers that come along are not going to bother you anymore. You know, herbs like reishi mushroom, you know, when you take this, it has it gives you this spiritual support and makes you feel safe and empowered. And then the stress trigger comes and, and adaptogens like rhodiola and, uh, and cordyceps. And these, you take these and, and the stress trigger comes and you're like... And then, then you're much safer. So then you're not going to have progesterone being, you know, cross synthesized. Into, but w when women get in midlife, uh, progesterone needs to be preserved and protected. And and so when women in midlife are under stress, uh, progesterone levels can become lower, and this causes osteoporosis because it, because uh, oh. uh, 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 progesterone is very important in bone density. And so that's why osteoporosis is showing up so much uh, with menopausal women and postmenopausal women. So. Um, now, the one thing that I can't do here is to say, oh, you know, tell you how you can avoid stress. And, hey, avoid stress. I mean, we can't exactly do that. But the thing is, wow. the, what the Chinese found herbs called adaptogens. The particular one is um, rhodiola, astragalus. A lot of the tonic herbs are adaptogenic. Reishi and, and shizandra and these herbs are adaptogenic. When we take these, they build up our adaptability to those stresses. And this is really it, it, crucially important for the health of our society right now and our women is to feel safe. And, and uh, the tonic herbs can really help with this. And uh, then that stress trigger comes and it doesn't bother you. You know, Love it. you are, oh my gosh. You, I don't mean to imply, oh, go out and get yourself in a danger because you think you're safe. No, don't Just do that. To test I mean, your watch, Just to watch test your adaptogenic qualities. <laughs> This comes down, yeah, right. This comes down to the the kidney and adrenal. If the adrenals are strong, when you, if you're under stress all the time, your adrenal hormones are, are burned out, so your adrenals get burned out. So most, uh, the majority of women I check, uh, low adrenals, yeah, yep. from stress. Yep. No more Men coffee, too. everybody. Um, stop. stop and so with the caffeine. when we replenish the adrenals through using tonic uh, herbs like adaptogens, um, then when the adrenals are replenished and we're eating healthy food, that's going to resonate down to our kidneys. Our kidneys are our real foundation. When the kidneys are strong. We feel adaptable and resilient against the stress. Now, I like to use an analogy, and Dr. Bruce Lipton sort of started this story, and uh, I'm finishing it for him. He never really gave a punchline, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, so you've, um, and I'm using an analogy of some things he talked about. But um, so you got two women, right? Just saw a movie, had a good time, and they're walking down an alley to their car, you know, and they put their purses and they're talking, and all of a sudden out of the alley comes this guy with a hoodie like this, going like that, right? And they go, and so these two women could respond in entirely different ways to the to this guy in front of them. One woman could respond like this, like that, and the other woman could respond like this, like that, right? Now, which one of the two is the robber going to go after, right? The one, okay, let's imagine that the one who recoiled in fear was the bigger woman, and the one who was stood and pointed her finger like, like yeah, Charlie, try it. She's a little bitty petite thing. Let's imagine. Doesn't matter. The guy is going to go for the weaker, the one that he perceives the weakness. Yeah, well, that's that's the one nature is. That's right. Nature, that's nature right. will the weak. Nature comes in and just nails it. So we have to, when we have that adaptability to those stresses, we're walking down the alleyway, and we're not any more capable of physically protecting ourselves uh, than this guy could easily beat us up, but. We feel safe. He's not going to bother us. Well, He's which formula us. can we take for that? We only have a few more minutes, but oh my gosh, Romania, you've completely my, blown my new my adaptogenic mind. formula. It's okay. called high altitude. I'm like, which formula can we take for that? Because I always walk by myself at night. Yeah, high altitude. Okay, high it's, altitude. Yeah. We've we got call it that because all of the herbs in the formula are coming from very high places. Oh, the, I like that. Cordyceps, uh, you know, Siberian ginseng. Which is actually Eleutherococcus is its real name now, and uh, 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 rhodiola, and so it, it also this formula benefits the lungs a lot too. Oh, but nice. uh, it's a wonderful adaptogenic formula. It tastes fantastic too. God, it amazing! So I'm gonna get them all. Okay, I want the care package. High altitude women's yeah. health formula. Women's women's complete. Women's complete formula, and which is the one for the menopausal women? Well, I don't have that on Shaman Shack just yet. I guess I shouldn't say that because in, within a month or two, we will. It will be. Uh, well, we're seeing this in January, in February, early February 2, 2017. So we'll have it there. Okay, but it's I'm going to get high formula. altitude, women's complete, and then which is the best formula for men that they can eat during the cleanse and all the time to stay virile? Yeah. 
guys uh, can take revital is a really nice formula for them because men can can take the, the uh, yam and also cross synthesize it into androgen hormones and GABA and this kind of stuff down from that synthesis chain. Nice. But um, but also I have one called Spark. Uh, mm. It's flat out. Men are sexual beings. We're 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 we really need you know to be driven by those androgen hormones so we can get up on the roof and build that roof on the house and then we can take care of our women and fight for her and all that and and we but th those are energies associated with the sexual energies and so with men you do want to uh, address the sexual energies you want their young energy strong that doesn't mean they're going to become violent or something that's when they got a toxic liver then they got to cleanse their livers so they can, men can take my deep cleanse formula so uh, a great protocol for men would be deep cleanse and spark nice deep cleanse spark and then revitalize Revital if they want. It's yeah. a kind of a. It's good for athletes, for bone and muscle and all that. Um, then I, I should say I, my favorite product of all my products for all people, men and women, old and young, children doesn't matter, uh, lactating women, pregnant women is a super morning gene, and uh, this has reishi mushroom in it, which is the great spiritual protector, and um, it, and a bunch of uh, foods for their anti age and anti aging formula. I take it every day. It tastes so good. You just it's a it's a shake mix. You put it in some almond milk. But uh, this thing tastes so good. You can't believe it. Oh my gosh! How many formulas do you have? Well, I have about 35 products on Chama Shack that I created, and I could do more, but... We need know. to do a video just where you tell us about every single product. Like, I just want the breakdown of every product, because they are incredible. But, I mean, I'm still, I was so happy to have you on in honor of the Women's March to talk about the women's formula, women's um, complete, complete. Um, uh -huh. high-altitude... Because yeah. every woman faces yeah. stress. We Those two together it. are excellent. And then if we've got women in midlife, yeah, revital. Revital. Re revital and high altitude for, for women in midlife. And then, of yeah. course, the counterpart to us women it, are the men with who we love. Um, yeah. Deep cleanse, and, revital, and, and the other spark. one, spark. Spark. Uh -huh. You can't forget <laughs> yeah. that because uh -huh. the spark of uh -huh. life, the enzymatic reaction is what creates life. Sperm and egg. Spark. Oh, yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah. That's uh -huh. the spark of life. Remember that. Oh my gosh, you have been so incredible. Before, I'm so sad that our time is up because I have so many more questions for you. But could you, before we leave, could you leave us with maybe three tips on how you stay so vibrant? I mean, you told us about all the formulas you take, but I'm wondering, above and beyond your incredible formulas, what are like three health practices that you partake in every day to stay as youthful and balanced as you are? Well, I can sum it up in one practice I do because I'm actually a little on the lazy side the rest of the day. What? <laughs> but um, uh, the one thing that I do seems to be sufficient for me uh, for very keeping very very uh, healthy in in in, yes, in my right, in my own right. Um, so what I do is I get up in the morning, I go out that door right there in the and I look into the sun when I can. If it's real early in the morning, you look into the sun, a little blink like that, let some sun in your eyes. And then uh, right now I'm staying in Ojai, California, uh, in, a, in, a old, in, a, in a little shack, uh, you know, in a, in a it's off the shaman ranch. shack. It's the shaman yeah, shack. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So what I do is I, I go out and I run in the morning around the whole avocado ranch. Wow. And uh, as I'm running, there are some little patches of, er, of weeds that I know of that I like. I, I, there's cleavers and mallow, and uh, there's morning glory leaves, and then there's some others that I don't really know what they are, but I tasted them, and they taste really good. There's one that kind of looks like carrot tops a little bit. And so as I'm running, I reach down and grab some of those weeds. I get a handful of weeds. And I come back to the house and I put them in a blender with, and I put in almond milk. And I'm a guy. I just go to the grocery store and get that, you know, that, the, the, the almond milks. But it's great to make it, you know, your own almond milk. From firm, soak your almonds overnight and blend them and, and squeeze it through a bag. That's yeah, the better yeah. way. Yeah. But anyway, I get some of the premium almond milk. I get the unsweetened stuff. And I put that in the blender with the weeds. And I put my super morning ching in there every day, a big couple heaping spoonfuls of that. And then I'll put in whatever fruit fruit is ripe at the time. Like right now, we're at the very end of persimmon season, so I'll throw a persimmon in there. Yum. And uh, blend that up, man. And, and I just sit then sit outside in the sun again, bare-chested, and let the sun on my back and on my chest and drink this shake. Sometimes I put an avocado in it. Um, like if I don't have persimmon, I'll put something to kind of thicken it a little bit, like an avocado, uh, maybe a banana occasionally. And then uh, I drink that, and man, I mean, the next rest of the day, come evening, usually after dark sometime, I usually take a run down the street here and back for maybe a quarter mile or something like that. Amazing. And uh, that's it, you know. 
Oh my gosh, Romania, I love your life. It's just like simple, <laughs> simple, healthy bliss. It's, it's heaven. You are such an inspiration to me and to so many. And I so appreciate you sharing your time and your wisdom with us today. You're we, have, we have guardian angels that help us too. And we, uh, we seek and we find, you know, but the yes. guardian angels also show. <laughs> yes, and ask and you shall receive. And that's proof mm -hmm. in your life's pudding. You asked yeah. for the master, Ron Teagarden appeared. You asked for your Chinese counterpart. She showed up and brought you to, to meet the herbs themselves on the street cards. You're amazing, yeah. truly. Yeah. Keep it up because we need you. And, you know, not only are these powerful, highest quality in the world herbs that Romania makes his tonics from, but he yeah. himself is such a loving, caring being that his energy is in these formulas too. And... Obviously, if you just watch this video, you can tell what a loving, compassionate, balanced man he is. So I would only want to buy my herbs from you. I would only want to buy my tonics from someone like you because I need that loving, balancing energy. And, you know, people, it's not from a sweatshop. It's consciously made and consciously procured and support good people. So how can yep. we find you and order these awesome tinctures and tonics? Uh, shamanshackherbs.com. There you go. It's an incredible site. Shamanshackherbs.com. You know, yeah, shamanshackherbs.com. There's there's another shamanshack.com. There's something else. Shamanshackherbs.com. So You'll see the growths on the tree. You'll see the mushrooms growing off the tree. You'll see his yeah. awesome videos. You'll see his incredible, dynamic, beautiful, wonderful, profound, visionary books that you should yeah. definitely get. Seven of them. There's one yeah. that's coming out in an audio book soon. We have so yeah. much more to talk about. I'm going to have to call you for session two. All right? Oh, yeah, sure. We sure. Oh, people can get video. in touch with me. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, emails, um, send me information about yourself, you know, your your basic issues and your, uh, you know, your body and those things and your, you know, spiritually stressed. Uh, and then I can get back and, you know, we can do it like that. I see people in person, too. I'm um, happy where to. Can, where can people email you from the website where it says contact? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody, yes. get a hold of Romania. He is truly an insightful healer. If Ron T. Garden consults are free too. Consults yeah. are free. Uh -huh. The herbal formulas are not, but they're worth every penny. <laughs> but yeah, please get send Romania your issues. It's it's not every day that you're gonna get an a Dow expert herbalist to assess your situation and prescribe the exact tinctures for you. So tonics tinctures. You're amazing, Romania. Uh, your your namesake is amazing, as are you. I so yeah. appreciate you coming on today, and I cannot wait to place my order right now. Great. I'm going to go and online. For people who want to learn more about what I do and all this, I did create an online course. Oh, my gosh. It's called gateoflife.org is the course, and it's uh, it's uh, 290 bucks. It comes with a seven herb, whole herb formula, so you get to hold, taste, touch, drink tea of the herbs as you learn about them. And there's audio lessons and video lessons, and it's all inspiringly uh, you know, done. It's not like technical, and uh, it's more about teaching us how do we see life, how do we look at everything and understand how life really thrives from its, its natural inner workings, and, and it's the macro and the app and the micro, you know. Wow. That sounds amazing. Can you do, say the website one more time? Uh, Gateoflife.org. Oh my gosh, I am gonna scope that out. I yeah. read about it. I just, I'm, wow, that's so incredible. You are amazing. Thank God for you. Thank you for shining such healing light in this world, Romania. You are a true humanitarian that I needed to chronicle. So thank you for being on the show today. You are so awesome. Thank you. Everybody, stay healthy, stay herb tonic, and go to shamanshackherbs.com, herbs with an S, shamanshackherbs.com, and order the formula that resonates with you, or email Romania personally. This Taoist master will get back to you about what he recommends for your condition, your situation, to give you more vibrance in life and more balance. So, amen, my brother. Keep, keep shining your light. And we will be back on this channel soon with more Romania wisdom. <laughs> Thank you.